woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Well, hello, good afternoon, welcome to Woodcraft. Uh, my name is Larry, and today I'd like to talk to you guys a little bit about Purple Heart. Um, Purple Heart is an interesting wood, um, and what is kind of interesting about it is it has a tendency to change colors on you. Um, when it's first cut, it's kind of a dull grayish purple brown. That's when they first cut it, and then if it's, as it's exposed to UV light and um, air, it kind of changes to a nice eggplant color. Um, over time, if it's left untreated, it will turn to a, a brown color. Um, as you can see, I kind of have two boards over here. One is the nice eggplant color. The other one's kind of a brown color. And over time, if you don't seal it or control it, it turns to that brown color. And we usually like Purple Heart because of the purple color itself. Uh, purple Heart comes from Central and South America and uh, it from Mexico on down to basically the bottom of Brazil. And I call it a hardwood. I consider it a hardwood because it has a hard, harder texture similar to like maple, you know. Yes, do you have any question? Yeah, that brown one that you've got up there, how, how deep does it go into the wood? In other words, if you plane it, yeah. Does it come back purple? It will come back purple somewhat, um, but Purple Heart likes, it, it really affects heat effects to it too. Yeah. And that's a lot of times you'll see a, a nice purple piece like this, and you'll put it on your wood lathe, and you turn it, and it will turn brown. This, actually this, this um, pin blinks up here, that was that brown. This was a nice purple color when I started, and it's from the heat and the oxygen getting to it, it turns it that brown color. Well. If you want a brown pin, you can get brown color of wood. But if you want a, you know, you want a purple, purple pin, um, and so there is a way, and we're going to kind of cover that a little bit of turning that brown color back to purple. Um, and here's a couple examples of these are pins that I did about a year ago, and they're a nice dark deep purple. Um, if you if you leave purple heart unsealed and stuff, it will turn past that dark purple color to a brown, brown color, as you kind of see like here on this piece here. One side, nice purple. The other side, it's kind of a, a, a brown color. And personally, I don't really care for the brown color. If I want, you know, a brown color wood, I'll go to a walnut or, you know, a different kind of wood to get that brown color that I'm looking for. But I want the nice purple color. Purple is just one of those interesting colors that's it's very popular amongst a lot of people. Purple is their favorite color. Uh, my daughter at home, her whole room is purple. To be a teenager again, um, <laughs> but uh, it it's very it's a very good wood. It's rot resistant, um, and it does work really good on most your power tools. It is a little bit on the sappier side of woods. Uh, some purple hearts you'll kind of see, especially on the end grain of it, you kind of see the darker sap and stuff. So it, some pieces will have a tendency to gum up your tools a little bit. Not horrible, there are woods that are a lot worse as far as sap goes for gumming up your tools, but it's something to be aware of. Um, you may have to clean your saw blades and stuff after you're done, get all the sap and stuff off of them. Um, but it, 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 it does sand very well, but once again, sanding, the heat and stuff, sometimes will change that color of it. Now, if you've done a project and you've got it all done and it's turned that brown color, and it's a bigger project, and you go, I really want it to be more purple. You can set it out in the sun. The UV light in the sun actually will help darken it or, or bring that purple color back. Um, and there are sometimes, like I've done a few jewelry boxes of it and haven't been happy with the purple color, but before I put a finish on it, I've let it set for a couple weeks. And over that couple weeks time, the air and stuff getting to it has brought the color back to it, to a color that I'm happier with. Um, but on the smaller pieces, like these pin pieces here and stuff, usually we're, we're trying to do pins, we're trying to do them quick, and we want to get them done, and we want to get them finished. Now, these pins right here, I did these over a year ago, and they're still a nice purple, purple color. Um, there are guys, and there are some studies on the internet that I've read, I've never tried this at home, but some guys say you can bake it in the oven. Now, if I took a piece of wood and I put it in my wife's oven, I'm not going to be in a. I'm going to be in a lot of trouble, 
because it, it does produce a smell from what I understand. Um, one guy said that he, if you bake it at 300 degrees for two hours, it brings the color back really, really good. Another guy said he put it in at 400 degrees for an hour and it came back. Um, but in this instance here, um, I think if I tried baking it in the oven, I would be in a lot of trouble. Now, I'd like to get a little toaster oven and try it in the garage, um, but I would watch it real close because I don't want to set anything on fire. Um, so kind of for today's demo, I'd like to kind of show you um, how dramatic it does change with a little butane torch on the lathe here, on this pin blank here. Now, when I turned this pin yesterday, um, it started out as this nice pur bright purple or color. And as you can kind of see here, it has gone to that duller brown color. So um, <laughs> what I saw is I saw a guy on the internet on YouTube and he did this with a little butane torch and I thought this is really neat and I've tried it on these two pins here and even after a year they're a nice purple color here. So let's give it a whirl here and hopefully I won't set anything on fire. So I gotta kind of set it at a low speed here and one thing when you do this is you have to focus a little bit more heat closer to the bushings because the bushings are going to absorb some of that heat. And just kind of a slow, steady process here. And as you can kind of see, it kind of dramatically changed it. Now, it did make it go a little bit black. And that's kind of what you expect a little bit is to get a, go a little darker. Um, when we get done here, we'll do a little light sanding on it. And that will remove a little bit of that, that darker black color. We got a little too hot in that one spot there. That's a good question. Um, uh, Butch asked what the, what the heat does to the adhesive. Well, I use two-part epoxy on this. And um, in the past, I never known any difference. I didn't have any problems at all with the epoxy coming apart from the uh, brass tube inside the pin. So you can kind of see here, we did get a dramatic change there, but there are a, a little bit of darker spots here and a little bit of that kind of that sap does come up a little bit. So what I like to do, is I'm going to hit this real quick with a little 600 here, and you'll see it get a little bit, a little bit lighter in color. Crank our speed up here a little bit. As you kind of see, it did lighten it up a little bit. And a lot of times, um, if you don't have this sanded really smooth when you start, you're gonna get a little bit of the fibers that will burn off. So a little light sanding, and then a little buffing, a little polishing and stuff, it's gonna get it back, hopefully, to the state of something like this here. And uh, that's kind of what it is, but it's a dramatically what a little bit of heat did just to change that color back. Does anybody have any questions on anything here? Yeah, well, the, what I found is the heat on the tool itself um, makes it go brown. And I don't know if it's because 
of the scraping action or the cutting action because a lot of times too is when you run this through your table saw or a saw like that you notice the cut itself has turned that edge brown and uh, I don't know exactly why it happens and from everybody I've talked to they, they couldn't really come up with a, a specific answer. A lot of questions is, well, what is, the, what is the chemical in it that causes that blue color or causes it to turn? And no one has really done any scientific studies that I could find on, on what it is. Um, you know, and if you, I was a little unsteady here getting my heat across here. I think if you were a little steadier and take your time a little bit more, I had a little better success at home when not everybody was watching me. <laughs> But it does make a really a dramatic change from that brown color that was before. So it's kind of at this time here, I would go and run through my micro mesh um, grits here and apply my finish. And uh, I like to use a good friction finish or occasionally a CA finish on stuff. And I've found that once you get the finish on this woods, you lock it, it locks that color in. It helps it maintain for a lot longer. Now, if I had something that was gonna be out in the sunlight, um, I would use a, a finish that has a UV inhibitor in it. Um, I had a brother-in-law who made a console for his camper out of Purple Heart. It was beautiful when he was done. But the sunlight shining in through it turned it a brown brown. It almost looked like walnut after about a year of sitting out in the sun. Uh, he didn't use a UV inhibitor in it. So they say if, you're, you know, if it's going to have any type of sunlight into it, use a, a UV inhibitor on it. Um, does anybody else have any other questions? Yes? If, if, if you are making you know, a piece of furniture, does the saw, you said, changes that color of the, of the cup? Yes. Yes, it can. It, it has. Now you've got dark, big field of light, and then dark again on all the edges. You could. You could have it, it that heat and stuff yeah. will change it. As you kind of see how heat dramatically affected that little piece there. I've seen the saw blades take a nice purple, purple color and turn it to a brown. Now, like I said, it, if, you, if you let it set for a while or you put it in the sun, you can kind of control that color, get that color to come back for you. It's, it's an interesting to work, wood to work with. It's one of the really rare ones that kind of does this. Uh, Paduk will do this to a certain extent. Um, you'll, you'll cut it, you'll sand it, and it'll be a nice bright red color. And over time, exposure to um, oxygen, oxygen and, and, and sunlight and stuff will turn it a little browner tinge. It's not as bad as, as Purple Heart for doing that, but it is one of the woods that will do that also. Yes, sir? Would you recommend using that to make a chopping block board? You could use it to use, and a lot of people do use it for a chopping, uh, chopping board. But usually what uh, um, you'll find too is when you're done with a chopping board, you're going to put like a mineral spirit oil or something on it. Something that kind of helps seal it. Yeah, exactly. Anything to kind of seal it to keep the oxygen and, you know, give it some sort of protection. It kind of seals it in. Because it's, it's usually like the wood breathing almost kind of causes it to change. Well, it, it will change the color sometimes. I know on, on one piece I did, I did a whole lot of um, sanding with a random orbit sander, and it, it, dra it drastically changed the color. I was not happy with it when I was done. But I let it sit in my garage and kind of stewed over it for about two weeks, and I went back and looked at it and went, hey, the color's coming back. So I waited about another week, and after three weeks of sitting there, it was back to a color that I was much happier with than when I first finished. Yeah. Yeah, it just, it has to do with exposure. And once it gets to that color or that level that you like, that's when you want to finish it and put that sealer on it and try to lock that color in. Do we have any other questions today? Okay, well that kind of wraps it up today. I'd like to thank you all for coming. Um, I have some handouts here. If you guys didn't get one, please be f feel free to grab one. Thank you very much.